Hello, I'm Falag and today we are going to be wiping the floors with aliens. Hello, hello everyone, I'm Falag and welcome to my first video about long term strategy for long war. Today we are going to be covering early game research which is very important, it is pivotal uh, to stop the alien invasion, they have uh, giant advantage over you in the beginning of the game, but uh, I hope that my qu my guide is going to help you kick their asses early on and uh, show them the meaning of the word, uh, word fear. And uh, this is how we are going to do so. We are not going to probably rush anything, I'm not going to show you how to rush Gauss weapons or uh, anything like that, I'm going to show you how to build yourself a stable research base upon which uh, you can go whichever direction you want and kick their asses. So we are going to start. Uh, first and most important technology in the game is Xenobiology. Uh, it doesn't seem like much, it just uh, requires five sectoid corpses and we get to know a little bit about the alien physiolo physiology in order to rape them later on. So, uh, it may not seem like much, but it really is, because of uh, things that I'm going to talk in a second, I'm just going to quickly research this technology with Dev Console, so that I can show you specifically what I mean. Be right back. Okay, so here we are, the project is re researched. Uh, and uh, with it comes some direct benefits, which I'm going to talk about briefly. You can build alien containment, so which is a you know building in which you will be storing your alien captives later in the game. It is of no immediate benefit for you for the first uh, month or two. Then you have targeting modules available for manufacture. Uh, it's an item that gives plus 10 critical chance for your unit, so it's a it's a pretty decent bonus for your snipers or assaults or even infantry. So you should build a couple. But uh, the indirect but uh, very important benefit is that uh, since you have researched this technology, the Council is going to re uh, request uh, sectoid corpses from you, and in exchange they are going to offer you scientists. And that means all your future technologies from now on, after you have exchanged the sectoid corpses for scientists, are going to be researched faster. So. Uh, you will need uh, like 15, 20 more sectoid corpses altogether uh, for the early game. So keep that in mind. Other than that, uh, eh, do exchange because this is going to give you a very good benefit. And from here you can go to the second very important uh, research. It is also taking 18 days, so it will basically cover your first month, those two technologies. But alien weaponry is pivotal for a very similar benefit. It requires weapon fragments and uh, I will quickly give it to myself using the dev console so that I can talk about it uh, in more detail. Be right back. Alien weaponry, as you see, gives you very important benefits. The direct ones and indirect ones are of equal importance for the whole game. First of all, you can build Marksman Scope. It's an item you are going to use through the whole game for your uh, long-range scouts. Uh, it gives uh, one very simple and very efficient benefit. If you give your scout a marksman rifle and a marksman scope, it is going to have a limited uh, squad sight. Which means that it is going to become an incredibly effective uh, long distance flanking unit, especially with concealment. Uh, it is going to simply massacre your enemies. There are a couple of tactics you, you can do with that, which I'm going to show you in a different video. For now, this is go uh, suffice it to say that uh, Marksman Scope is an item you should at least have two of. <laughs> then we have Scopes. Uh, usually around four or five of them is uh, the bare minimum that you are going to need in the game. Uh, they not only give you flat uh, aim increase, which is great for your low-level troops or troops with poor aim, but they are also being used as a uh, base for some more complicated items later on in the game, which I'm going to talk about later. Uh, but the important indirect benefit of this technology is such that uh, once you have researched it, the Council is going to request weapon fragments from you, and in exchange they are going to give you engineers, which is going to allow you to build your satellite uplinks faster and take, cover, uh, take control of more ground, and uh, thus get yourselves more money and so on. You can also uh, produce items faster, which is fucking important because you will be able to field more experimental technology on the field faster and surprise the aliens, and when they go like big eyes, like, what is that? You can fuck them right in that eyeball. And uh, thirdly, uh, when you build a workshop and you uh, build an item faster, you are going to be getting your uh, resources back, you are going to get back your alloys, alarm and so on, and uh, when you build items faster, you get uh, your discounts faster, and that means you can build more items, which is uh, 
fucking in insanely important for the game. And uh, just be careful because if you uh, sell too many too many weapon fragments, uh, then you are not going to be able to uh, research your more complicated technologies later in the game. The rule of thumb is, for me at least, to try to keep the minimum of uh, hundred. 150 weapon fragments in the first year because later on you are going to need them and you can sell them as your last resort but uh, in general if they uh, request only a couple of them and give you an engineer or two in exchange it's a very good deal and you should take it especially in early game when you really need your early engineers and from this place you can go three or four different ways we can go to beam lasers uh, to uh, give better weaponry uh, for your soldiers and uh, your interceptors. You can go Xenogenetics to field earlier mechs or psionics uh, and uh, G-modified soldiers if you have the meld for it, which is uh, incredibly important if you decide to go this way and uh, if you think you can handle the enemies for in tactical combat with just ballistics for a while. And uh, Experimental Warfare, which is going to allow you to uh, produce more fancy items like chem grenades and uh, ghost grenades later in the game and uh, which is going to allow you to, uh, to research very good foundry projects uh, which I'm going to talk about in detail in a moment and you can also go for alien materials to uh, create better armor for yourself so that uh, your troops have more survivability on the field I'm also going to talk about it in a second and lastly Xenoneurology which is allowing, uh, going to allow you to get early captures it is uh, also an important technology so this is the moment you choose which way your early game is going to go and I'm going to talk about it in detail in a second okay so uh, first on the base uh, we are going to take uh, something I usually take first which is beam lasers uh, beam laser technology gives you great uh, direct and indirect uh, bonuses well the indirect bonuses of beam laser is simply the next technology right behind it the advanced beam lasers so if you have the alloys for it and the weapon fragments for it which you probably should by the uh, by the moment you can research it it should be around the beginning of April first half of April at least then uh, you should research it uh, in order to get your interceptor and air game up to speed as well as your tactical game it does you see cost 10 alloys 40 weapon fragments I'm going to quick research it with Dev Console to talk about it in detail. Okay, so let's see. Uh, first thing that it gives you, it's a laser pistol. It is a great weapon for your covert operative or or maybe even a sniper or two in the game. I usually build only one of them for covert operative and that's it. Uh, but you may build more if you want to uh, give it to your gunstinger units. Uh, then laser rifle it is going to be your workhorse for the next few months. It's a decent weapon, it gives one more damage than your normal uh, ballistic rifle. Uh, but the important thing about it is that uh, it gives you plus aim. The bonus aim you are going to use uh, for greatly during the next few months to train rookies, train your soldiers to the great benefit. And uh, yeah, you should be, I usually build around three or four, four of them and uh, even more because they are going to break probably if you have that options enabled so uh, if you do build more uh, in my games that uh, have the prototype weapons breaking uh, what was the second wave's name I'm gonna just check it I can't remember those names damn it wear and tear that's the option if you play with wear and tear uh, you should build more than four <laughs> much more well basically the rule of thumb for wear and tear is build double the usual uh, amount of items you need Anyway, back to the weapons. And auto laser is your workhorse for your uh, usual gunner units. Usually I build one or two of them. Laser shatter is great for assaults and scouts and engineers and sometimes even infantry and medics. So uh, two is the bare minimum. Four is uh, what you may be using if you play aggressively. Heater is uh, like the machine pistol. I never build it, never use it, never never will because it gives better damage than, damage than pistol but it has uh, low mobility so it is useless, useless for my gunslinger assaults it is useless for my covert operative and that means I'm not going to be fucking building it In a, that's the end of it uh, or was it laser shatter which one? laser shatter is the uh, SMG an SMG you need for your scouts and rocketeers, but uh, you don't need the laser heavy pistol. 
what it is called, let me see, heater, yeah, this is the pistol, as I said, and less laser shutter ray you are going to need for your rocketeer, and sometimes for your scouts, or the melt picking up unit, so you need to build that, at least one, two, uh, maybe not, and then we have gutting laser, which is the uh, LMG, one is going to be enough, I doubt you're going to need more unless you play very defensively. And laser carbine for your uh, low mobility, you need to make them run faster. It is also for rocketeers, uh, scouts and uh, melt picker uppers. And that is the direct things that you need, it's going to eat a lot of alloys from you and a lot of money, but you will be able to outfit your enemies in better weaponry, which is going to give you early advantage over the enemies. Uh, usually, if all goes well around... Uh, 15th of uh, April, you should already be starting be to build them. And research the advanced beam lasers, which are going to give you... Yeah, the laser shotguns are in advanced beam lasers. I'm sorry for that, it was my mistake. I have a giant hole in my head, because I smoke too much uh, plasma and uh, jellied alerium. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? The advanced beam lasers are the point of this... Uh, tree of technology, it is going to give you a very, very important benefit, which I'm going to talk about in a moment when I give myself this technology to the console. Okay, there we are. So, uh, the weapons that are uh, being given to you by Advanced Beam Laser are also very important for your tactical game, because you have the Scatter Laser, which is the laser shotgun that you need for your uh, scouts, <laughs> for your uh, assaults, and sometimes for your engineers and medics, and even, engin and even infantries. This is the weapon that you need the bare minimum of two, and uh, up to four, maybe. Laser cannon, it is the stepping stone, it is the, gr it is the grand design that you are going for right now. It is a very effective weapon for your interceptors. It uh, gives off good damage, it's effective against both fighters and scouts, and even me you can basically even take down a medium UFO with it, which is huge for early game that you can take on uh, a medium UFO one-on-one -on -one. and uh, it is also relatively cheap and uh, you will probably be using it for the rest of the year if not uh, if not longer it is going to be replaced by better weapons eventually but it is still going to be a support weapon later on so uh, this basically levels the field for your air game for the, uh, in the early stages of the invasion. Then you have super heavy lasers, which is uh, your weapon, weapon for, uh, for your sheave. If you use sheaves, build it. If you don't, then don't. Laser sniper rifle, fucking awesome. Build it for your snipers. Duh. Laser strike rifle is uh, the marksman rifle version, so it is for scouts and snipers. I usually build uh, two of those as well as two of sniper rifles. And heavy laser rifle, um, if you like them, build them. If you don't, then don't. It is giving uh, additional ammunition, so a little, uh, a little increase in damage, but uh, the, your second shot is going to be uh, suffering from aim penalties. Uh, using the weapon is uh, rather, I don't know, controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm going to show you the stats of this weapon so you can decide for yourself. Heavy laser rifle. Boom, there you go. As you see, it has base damage 4-8 with 8% crit and 8 to 11 critical damage, while your regular laser rifle, who is somewhere there, has 4 to 6, 8% and 6 to 9. So that's the difference. Base ammo is 3 and confers plus 6 accuracy. Okay, and heavy laser uh, confers plus 1 damage over laser rifle, but moving uh, will reduce your aim by 10 but it still has plus 6, so uh, it is reducing the aim by uh, 4 uh, towards the soldier normal aim. It uh, confers minus 1 mobility, which is uh, not so good, and uh, it has the base ammo of 3. So it is up to you, do you want to use it or not? It's controversial, I usually use it for my uh, Overwatch infantry or people who I don't expect to move. For example, I give it to my engineers every now and again, so that if they move they will use grenades, if they don't they will use a heavy laser rifle. It's uh, the matter of your tactics, really. But back to research. So now that you have uh, built the advanced lasers, you can go to any of the other two stages, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, one of them I'm going to cover next. It's going to be Winnie, Mini, Miny, Mouse, Xenogenetics. 
Uh, Xenogenetics is going to be your stepping stone for the uh, mid game. It's going to be either giving you early game psionics, which is fucking awesome, or me uh, mid game mechs, which is going to be pretty good over there. Personally, uh, if you have the meld for it and if you have the resources for it, then I suggest going for psionics. They are going to be uh, very useful for you in the early game and you will be able to train your, uh, what's his face, volunteer earlier. The mechs have been nerfed in beta 15, so uh, as much as I would recommend them previously, this time I would rather uh, suggest xenogenetics and then psionics over mechs. And I'm going to talk about it in a second, bear with me. Ok, so here we are, we arrived at the, the second branch of the tree you can climb, it is the Xenogenetics. It is uh, basically allowing you to build genetics lab and train your uh, gen genetically modified troopers early on if you build it and if you have the meld for it. If Basically if you are over flooding with meld and you don't really have to sell it, then build it and it's going to give you a great advantage for the whole game. And uh, it gives you a tip to acquire more meld, because like, da. <laughs> Acquiring more meld is going to be very important throughout the whole game, and you re I, I really don't think you really need that tip. And uh, after you are go you are done with this, we are going to be going with sectoid autopsy, if I remember correctly. Give me a moment. Okay, so, uh, sectoid autopsy is giving you the... Uh, Cybernetics research bonus, so it is important for you to build your max and also your vital point targeting soldiers are going to do additional damage against sectoids and you will be able to view their perks in combat uh, with the F1 when you uh, target them. However, uh, Xeno Neurology is the tech you will also need very much to, be, uh, to build. It will allow you to be the Narc Thrower, which with alien containment is going to allow you to capture your uh, uh, enemies and uh, gather Erlip's uh, plasma weapons, which is fucking important for the very late game when, uh, you know, big stockpile of them from the beginning of the game is going to save you a lot of time before you can launch the, uh, your plasma weapons. Because you need like 30 plasma rifles, uh, 15 uh, plasma carbines, I don't remember the pistols, a few, and so on. So uh, you will need a lot of plasma weapons and Xenon Neurology uh, early on in the game is going to let you do that because you can build a stockpile of them and also when you are tight on cash you can sell them. So that's the important part and uh, it is also going to unlock Xenopsionics for you, which is uh, what you need for your early uh, psionic units. Uh, once you build it, which I'm going to do right now, as you see it requires 15 meld to research. And once you do this, you are going to be revealed the following. Once you research Xenopsionics, you can build a psionic lab, which is freaking important because with it you can start testing your people for psi powers. And uh, with them you can have uh, early very good advantage over your enemies. For example, if you manage to mind fray a mechtoid, it's fucking useless for three turns or more, in which time, uh, well, it's going to have on medium range like one percent chance to hit you. It is better than game grenades, it is better than suppression, it is better than anything. And uh, you can do it to any organic unit. Mind fray for the win. It is uh, having uh, little low chances if you are fighting uh, high will enemies, however it is great against enemies like floaters, it is great against enemies uh, like mectoids, so mind free for the win and you can have it early in the game, which is great for you and it also uh, manage gives your units uh, psi experience which they are going to need to unlock uh, more advanced powers once you uh, dissect the proper aliens like sectoid commanders and so on. And uh, it is going to basically allow you to control the battlefield easier earlier. And from there uh, we can sort of take a step back and move into early mechs. So with early mechs, if you, are, if you want to take them, you do not build Xenopsionics, uh, but you still need to dissect the sectoid for the cybernetics research. And uh, you need experimental warfare alien computers and uh, if I believe correctly by bi alien biocybernetics, so this is more of a mid-game research, I'm not gonna be really talking about it yet, however you can go for experimental warfare from here 
rather than uh, Xenopsionics and uh, diverge into early game mechs. However, in beta 15 it is, uh, in my opinion, less profitable for you than early Psionics. In any way, I'm going to be talking about the experimental warfare now. Be right back. Okay, here we are. We can now talk about experimental warfare. I'm not going to be quick researching it because uh, it uh, directly gives you uh, smart shell pods for your sheaf and uh, some other uh, small item. For sheaves, in the, anyway, one removes the overwatch penalty and one gives your sheaf the ability to flash. And uh, the importance of experimental warfare early on, if you want to, be, to uh, pick it up, is that uh, it will allow you to uh, build some foundry projects like uh, improved medkits uh, with Tin Man interrogation. And uh, it will also allow you to build, also with Tin Man interrogation, a very important uh, items like Chem Grenade. So yeah, uh, later on it is going to give you many more uh, foundry projects that uh, I will talk about in a different video. But for now, I guess this is uh, this is it. Those are the uh, branches you may go for in the early game that will give you an early advantage over the enemies. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, let me know in the comments, like the video, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and I will see you again next week. See you and thank you for watching.